Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this beautiful nebula right here that was only discovered back in 2004 and we finally figured out what caused it and why it looks so strange. Specifically, we now understand what exactly happened in this particular region of space and why it acquired such unusual circles and such an unusual shape compared to a lot of other nebulae. But also we're going to talk about nebulae in general because obviously apart from being mysterious and also extremely diverse, there are also some of the most beautiful formations in the universe. Although, in my opinion, they actually are the most beautiful. And I mean, just look at this. Look at this beauty. This is the famous uh, V838 Monoceros, and this is just absolutely mind-blowing. This series of images was taken by Hubble Telescope over a period of several years, and it essentially presents some of the most beautiful natural art of the universe. And it just doesn't get better than that. But one of the reasons I'm showing you this right now is because we now think that whatever created this particular beautiful nebula may have actually been a very similar event to the nebula you see right here, known as Blue Ring Nebula. Also, it's really important to understand that if you were to grab your telescope right now, and if you were to run and try to find it and take a look at it, you wouldn't actually see it, unfortunately. Because this right here is a composite shot created using an ultraviolet camera where the ultraviolet light appeared to be blue. In other words, unlike other nebula, like the famous Carina nebula, in this case you would actually just see darkness of space. Which is why this nebula was only discovered back in 2004, since it's not visible in visible optical light, it was only discovered completely by accident using ultraviolet investigation. And here, just by looking at this, you can see that something strange is going on. There's this very unusual blue glow, two purple rings, and also a star in the middle. And because most similar nebula are usually associated with some sort of a major event, like for example expulsion of the outer shell of a star, or in some cases they can also be indicative of a new star being formed, like the red rectangle nebula that you see right here. And also in other cases it can also be a result of a major supernova. This is the famous Tycho Supernova Nebula. So trying to figure out what created this was actually a mystery for approximately 16 years now. And that's mostly because the emissions produced by this nebula and also the shape produced didn't actually fit any of the other scenario. And so according to some of the recent studies and also recent research, this nebula just like V838 seems to be an extremely unique object in the Milky Way galaxy. But it seems that we might have solved the mystery and we might actually now know what created this and why it's so unique. So first of all, the star itself is called this. And if you were to look at it in a telescope, you would just see this and nothing else. It's not a very difficult star to see either, its distance from us is about 6200 light years away, so you would actually see something if you had a telescope. But turns out that the reason why this star has such an unusual formation around it is because it used to be two stars. And it seems that this is a result of a very specific and a very unique collision between two stars that most likely happened around 5000 years ago. But the thing is, that's not really the surprising part. Mostly because we know that most of the stars out there, about 80% or even more than 80%, are binary stars. And a lot of them do collide with one another and merge, although others end up losing their partner. As a matter of fact, we believe that maybe Sun once upon a time also had a partner. It might have a missing twin somewhere out there. But today we know that as the stars grow older and as they essentially mature, they do become larger and larger in size. At some point, possibly reaching ridiculous sizes, about 700 or even 800 times larger than they originally were. And if one of the stars is close enough to its partner when it's doing that, obviously things become more complicated because either the star starts consuming some of the material from its partner or the smaller star gets swallowed. And interestingly, even in this simulation, you can kind of see what's already happening here. The exchange of material and the spiraling of material toward the star is actually one of the main reasons we're observing what we're observing. In other words, one of the main reasons why these unusual shapes were created. Because according to the scientists in a paper you can find in the description below, as the smaller star approached the larger star, it left behind this unusual spiral-like formation that eventually creates a very interesting ring-like formation somewhere around here. And this in effect creates a kind of an impenetrable layer that no light and no gas will be able to escape very easy. Although if you were to look at it from this side, everything on this end can escape quite easily. And so following the merger from these stars 
and following the release of a lot of different material from the outer layer, although that's not actually a supernova, that's once again somewhat similar to, for example, a planetary nebula, or essentially a creation of a typical star remnant such as a white dwarf when a star reaches a certain age. Although in this particular case, because of the addition of a new material, this star still actually is a regular star. It still has a lot of life in it, but it just threw out a lot of the materials early on. And so this ring on the side essentially caused a lot of the material, instead of creating a kind of a spherical shape, create two different cones, because right here that's where you can find this unusual ring formation. And it kind of blocked a lot of the material from leaving. And so when these two cones formed, they started to propagate in two directions, in opposite directions, with relatively equal velocity, creating something similar in essence to what you see right here. But why is it that we're seeing this and not the two cones? Well, having run these simulations, the scientists realized that it's just a matter of perspective. We're just looking at it from a slightly different view, and we're basically seeing these two cones at a slightly different inclination. And this is what the scientists refer to as the biconical geometry, and they present a very good analysis of what exactly we're seeing here, establishing the exact speeds of these two cones, and explaining in detail what they believe happened here, which actually makes a lot of sense. But similarly to the uniqueness of V838 Monoceros, what makes the Blue Ring Nebula particularly interesting is the fact that despite this being a collision between two stars, we can actually still see and analyze the central star. Normally, in the past when we saw these collisions, the stars involved in them created so much dust around that it was practically impossible to see what's happening in the center. But in this case, we actually see exactly what's happening in the center, and we can analyze pretty much everything, seeing how the star changes, seeing how the material disperses around the system, and thus learning a lot about these unusual events when two stars merge. But obviously, after a few thousand years, just like this nova right here, it's going to expand to the point where nothing will be visible and the star will be completely by itself, as if nothing happened. And the analysis for this nebula is actually extremely detailed. Like, for example, these purple rings that we have here, the two rings that we see, are created when the extremely fast-moving hydrogen, moving at speeds of around 400 km per second, strikes the interstellar medium and various uh, particles in that medium, and essentially gets energized by the medium itself, creating these beautiful ultraviolet rings with the purple part itself representing a kind of a shock front as the hydrogen spreads into the medium. As for the star itself, the analysis shows that it's at least 1.1 to maybe even 2 masses of the sun, and was created when a star that was about maybe a tenth of the mass of our own sun collided with a much larger star that was possibly a little bit heavier than our sun. And essentially this is the collision that produced all of these effects we're observing. And right now, it actually looks like this star has stopped fusing hydrogen now, and is fusing other elements, specifically helium, and is going to be fusing a lot of other elements, until eventually it runs out of everything and becomes a white dwarf. But prior to this, it's actually going to release another layer, but all of this is going to happen way, way after this particular beautiful image disappears, and all of this hydrogen disperses into the interstellar medium. And the thing is, these binary collisions are kind of important for us to understand because, as I mentioned, so many of these stars are binary, including the closest stars to us, Alpha Centauri, is essentially a binary star system. So trying to understand what happens in these collisions and how they help stars evolve is also very important for us in order to understand how things work in our galaxy. But I guess for now, that's all I wanted to mention in this video because that's essentially everything we know about this unusual blue ring nebula. It's definitely amazing when the scientists can solve a mystery of something extremely beautiful out there, and it's especially amazing when they provide a lot of mathematics and a lot of explanations for what exactly we're observing, and in this case there's practically no doubt on what we're seeing. But I'm sure in the next few years we're going to find another beautiful nebula somewhere out there, something even more mysterious, something even more unusual, and when that happens I'm going to make sure to make a video about it. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe support this channel on Patreon, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below, which is also now officially on sale because of the Black Friday. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, thank you so much, space out, and as always, bye-bye.